Hello all you happy plant powered people. Welcome to another edition of the Cuckoo Kitchen. Today we're going to look at a store cupboard staple which is mayonnaise. Now until recently it was quite hard to find in the supermarket but Veginaise and Hellman's own vegan mayonnaise is, is fairly widely available. However it is so simple to make that I really think that everyone should have this little trick up their sleeves. I don't bother buying it uh, because it takes literally seconds to make and I think you'll be really surprised how easy this is. We need uh, a couple of key ingredients which are rapeseed oil which is vegetable oil in the supermarkets not sunflower oil don't use that it doesn't work and soya milk again oat, mi oat milk almond milk they don't work the reason is and i did experiment i did try it and <laughs> thinking oh okay, no, it, it, it should work it doesn't because they both contain a thickening agent called lecithin when you put the two together and you mix them, we get an almost instant emulsion. Before we start cooking, let's have a look at the equipment we're gonna need. I'm gonna use a Nutribullet for the blending uh, in this recipe. You could use a big blender if you've got one. Again, it depends on the quantity. I mean, I must say, I find these Nutribullet blenders to be really handy, especially for making small amounts. One of the best bits about it is when it comes to getting the ingredients out, you can turn it upside down, give it a shake, and everything falls to the bottom, which is a lot easier than digging around in the bottom of a jug to get a few extra spoonfuls out. So you can actually pick them up really cheaply on eBay as well, because a lot of people buy them, thinking that they're gonna have smoothies every day and then realize a few months later that they've only had one when they made it, and, and they sell for almost half price. So if you don't have a blender, they're really good because of course smoothies are a great way to start your day and we'll be looking at lots of good fruit based uh, breakfast later. The recipe is, couldn't be simpler. It is one milk to two oil and we need a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of vinegar which will just give a, a sour edge and a curdling to the milk which I'll show you in a second. And I'm going to make quite a large portion this time. I'm going to make 600 milliliters of mayonnaise. 200 milk, 400 oil. And this is because we're going to make some interesting sauces afterwards. Things like tartar sauce, sriracha sauce, burger sauce, which are easy to make. Stuff that you can buy in the supermarket, admittedly, but most of it won't be vegan. And of course, all of those things come in jars, they all have to be produced, and they all have a big carbon footprint. So by making our own sauces, we're not only saving money, eating more healthily, eating vegan and plant-based, but we're also helping the environment. So that's a big win always around. So let's measure out. So we're going to go 200 milliliters of milk. And then to that, I'm gonna add a little squeeze of lemon juice. So this is approximately a tablespoon that's going in here. And as you can see, it's starting to curdle. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of vinegar, again, about a teaspoon, which will help it to curdle again. And so now we're getting something that's beginning to look a bit milky and cheesy. We've had 200 milliliters of milk, so we need 400 milliliters of oil. And my little jug only goes up to 200. We're actually going to overfill that container. So fortunately, the billets come with a couple of sizes. So I'll just quickly swap this over. We need to add another 200 milliliters of oil. That goes into the Nutribullet. And now let's get ready to blend. Now you're going to be amazed at how easy this is. So simply blitz it. And now we have mayonnaise. The first mayonnaise base sauce we're going to look at is Allerly, which is also known as garlic mayo. Couldn't be simpler to make. We simply need half a cup of pre-made mayo and one clove of garlic. And again, you could vary this depending on how garlicky you like it, as I say. 
In fact, you don't even have to use measurements. You can just taste and, uh, and go from there. Cut that out. Okay, so there's our mayonnaise. I'm gonna squeeze in a clove of garlic. Pinch of salt. Mix the two together. Mmm, that is a deliciously garlic mayonnaise. The next mayonnaise sauce I'm going to make is burger sauce, which is actually a thing. I mean, I was first introduced to this probably in the 90s, coming out of a pub, the closing time going into a burger shop and seeing these big cylindrical dispensers with a strange pinky sauce in it. It's simply a mixture of mayonnaise and tomato sauce with a little bit of vinegar, but it doesn't half taste good and it's really good to dip chips in. So again, with veggie burgers, this is like a really good thing to get back to that authentic burger flavor that we're used to. So we're gonna measure out some mayonnaise. Again, this is another recipe that uses a two to one ratio. So I'm gonna start with four tablespoons of mayonnaise. And to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of tomato ketchup. One, two, and one teaspoon of vinegar. But white wine vinegar here. And we simply mix this together. Oops. Mm, that's tasty. And you could whisk this if you happen to have one to hand, I don't, but that is the burger sauce that you are, will be familiar with. Now the next sauce we're going to look at is tartar sauce, which coming up later in these cooker episodes, we're going to do some fake fish recipes. And to be honest, when you look at, if you remember what fish used to taste like, a lot of it is quite bland. And really it's the condiments, the tomato sauce, the vinegar, the salt, and the, and the tartar sauce are the key flavor ingredients. A good tartar sauce is of course still yummy with chips. Um, so again, a few store cupboard staples, gherkins and capers, always good. Capers great in salads, we'll be using lots of those later, so they're worth keeping. And gherkins on veggie burgers. I mean, I'm a gherkins man, so I like a couple of slices. Some people aren't, but again, in your tartar sauce, if you don't like gherkins, leave them out, just use capers. They're sour, but they don't have quite as, uh, as an acidic flavor. So we're gonna measure out three tablespoons of mayo. So let's get a gherkin out. Crucial, crucial thing, don't ever put your fingers in the gherkin jar. It, it, it's a sort of a fermenting environment in there and it will suddenly go cloudy and you start to incubate the whatever bacteria was on your finger when you stuck it in and it shortens the life of your gherkin. Always use a fork. And when you get to the end of the jar, don't throw the juice away. We, I've got an amazing recipe for a tofu burger that uses this and you'll need about the amount of leftover juice in, in the gherkin jar, so that's something to look forward to. So, we, we're gonna chop this as fine as we can. That's going to look quite good. Another little chop. Again, you can leave this down to taste if you really like gherkins, leave them big. But, uh, that's looking good, that's how I like it. And let's pop that into... Now this was quite a big gherkin, so I'm not gonna quite go with the whole thing. I'm gonna leave a little bit. And a teaspoon of capers. Capers, interestingly enough, are flowers. And if you break one open, you can actually see the little 
the little petals starting to come off. And there you go, there's the centre of the flower. They're absolutely delicious. So we'll chop these up and you want to make this into as much of a mush as you can. Yeah, that's good. That's where I like to see it. So now we need a little bit of salt. Squeeze of lemon juice. And then we're just gonna mix it up. Mm, and that is a delicious tartar sauce. And the next mayonnaise-based sauce we're gonna look at is sriracha maize, something that I've really only seen in supermarkets. Um, the Flying Goose brand sriracha that is sold in the UK uh, is available now in most supermarkets and is pretty delicious. It's a mild sauce, it's a mild chili sauce. It's Thai in origin and it's named after the place it comes from, which is Sriracha. So we'll portion out some mayonnaise. Two, three, and a bit. Oops, they were small ones. And we're gonna add one teaspoon of sriracha. Again, if you're a chili head, you might like more, but this is going to be a nice flavor with some sauce that pretty much anyone can enjoy, even my daughter likes it. And then we're going to add just a few drops of maple syrup. Put three or four drops in, just like that. That'll be enough. And so we just blend this together. And there we have a nice sriracha naive sauce. Again, this would be great with crudite, which is just uh, vegetables which you can dip in. Mm. Now it's got a nice heat, lovely flavour, definitely recommend that one. So here we have four easy to make sauces which are my top four. One master ingredient mayonnaise which as you've seen is super easy to make. So don't buy it from the supermarket, make it yourself, subscribe to the channel and come back and join me next time in the cooker kitchen. Whoa stop we're not finished there. I've got one more bonus dish to throw in, and that is coleslaw. Who doesn't love that? Great with pizza, great with burgers. I think we're going in a little bit of a burger oriented theme here, but it's super simple, and if we've already made our mayo, it literally takes a couple of minutes to throw together. I've got a white cabbage, red cabbage is good, savoy cabbage, any type of cabbage, any type of hard sort of uh, uh, brassica is ideal for this. So I'm going to make enough for probably five or six people here. So I'm going to use half a cabbage. We're going to slice it into quarters. And what we want to do is remove this hard core here. Let's just get rid of a couple of the outer leaves. Okay, and now I'm going to get a big knife for this. I'm going to just thinly slice. Of course, if you like chunky coleslaw, leave it chunky, but I'm getting for a slightly thin, posh version here. So once we've got our little slices, we just cut them into four. That all goes in the bowl. We're going to repeat that again. Sharp knife really helps for this. And of course, mind your fingers. Okay, that's into four again. Okay, so that's our cabbage base. Now I've just washed these carrots. I always recommend don't peel them unless they're looking really manky for some reason, because all the vitamins are just underneath the surface of the skin. So you don't want to lose that. Okay, 
I'm gonna go for one and a half carrots here. Again, it's something you can vary depending on how you like it. So. Of course, it depends on the size of the carrot. In fact, looking at this, and I'd say it's roughly a two to one ratio of cabbage to carrot. I think one carrot's gonna be enough. So let's just have a look. So that goes into the bowl. Oops, drain that bit out, we don't need that. Start to mix this up. Mm, that's looking good. Maybe we need just a... Yeah, I think that's about right. Now, if you like onion, add some onion. I'm just gonna put some red onion in here because it's a bit milder. Of course, if you don't, leave it out. Um, I think it just gives it a little tang and zing to it. Huh? Now I'm going to use about a third of the onion. So I'm not going to take all the skin off because it helps keep it fresh in the fridge. And grate this. Now we do want to make sure that we get this well mixed in when it goes in. So I find it's easier to do a quick mix by hand because of course we've got nice clean hands before we do any cooking. And to do that before we put the mayonnaise in, it all gets a little bit stodgy once that uh, is in there. So that's looking about right. That onion's mixed up nicely. Now, I think we're going to need about a cup of mayonnaise for this, but it's something you can do by eye really and mix it in. So one, these are super big tablespoons. Uh, that's about, that's about a cup there. I think we do with a little bit more actually. Ground ground of pepper. Sprinkling of salt. Mix it up and you're good to go. Bring on the summer and we'll have that with a barbecue. Join me next time. <laughs>